the great big mind that is Dave Burst. I've had more than my share, f- fair share of weirdness happen to me in my life, and I want to give you a Google Maps tour of one of the weirder things that happened to me. Um, it's something I'm not exactly proud of, but it made it onto my CV, and it's something that none of my friends have on their CVs. It only required one skill, and that was being less clothed than uh, most other careers require. I was desperate. I was in between jobs, is what they say. I was out of work. You know, I, I just needed something to do. I needed a purpose. I needed to earn some money. So, um, have you ever been there? Anyone been there? No, oh, you're all lying. Of course you have. Anyway, it's all because uh, a, a creative director, who was the first advertising creative director I ever worked for, decided that he would save some money by getting rid of the cheapest and youngest person in his department, um, and rather than the deadweight uh, creatives that he already had there. So uh, that's, uh, that's digressing, really, because this story is actually about my, my dignity. Um, and my, my father wanted to help me, so he started asking people, hey, my son's looking for some work. Is there anything that he can do for you? And he spoke to his next-door neighbor who was a sculptor. And this guy said, yeah, I could, I could do with his help for maybe about 40 quid. So my dad thought that he was doing good. Um, it, and it turns out he was a, a, a bit ahead of himself. <laughs> and uh, I ended up going to this sculptor's house, and we went out to his garage in Glasgow in the middle of December. Can I just repeat that? Garage, Glasgow, middle of December. He had a one-bar electric fire that took it from frickin' cold to frickin' cold. It did absolutely nothing. It was colder than anyone who's about to be naked would like it to be. So the sculptor was taking a naked body cast of me, and that meant that being in that temperature, as a man, my embarrassment would be immortalized forever. And that meant that forever, People, whenever they saw this, uh, would see that I had real guts uh, to do something like this. He handed me a massive tub of Vaseline. I mean, never seen anything like it. And we got started right away. I, I took a big handful of this and I started greasing up my feet. You know, it's a weird thing to do, squelch, squelch between your toes. And then he put the plaster on. It went hot, it went cold. That means it's set. We removed it and it was absolutely perfect. You're able to look at this thing and you saw my toenails that I'd clipped in preparation for this, would you believe it? I, I, you could see the little creases in my skin, you could see the, the hobbity hairs on my toes, and the sculptor was admiring them and going, oh yes, this is exactly what we need. So while he was looking at them, I lubed up my legs from my ankles to my thighs, because uh, it was time to get on with the next stage. So he soaked the cloth in this bucket of plaster, and he put them on my legs, from my ankles, up past my knees, up to my thighs. It went hot, which was welcome, in this garage in Glasgow in the middle of December. It went cold, which wasn't so good, and then they were ready. And at that point, he pulled them off, and they were just as good as the feet were. Wasn't that great? So now for the big bit, and that was going from here to hear. Um, the sculptor made himself busy while a naked me took hands of Vaseline and just rubbed it everywhere that I could. And he then uh, sort of uh, turned his head as he laid on the strips of plaster. And I was just hoping I wouldn't get a chill uh, from the, the sort of temperature in this garage. This is Glasgow. And this is a garage in the middle of December. Don't know if I told you that. So, so he finished putting all the strips of plaster on top of me. And they went hot. Oh, that was good. And then it went cold. And oh, fuck. And we waited a little bit more. And then we went to remove it. And ah, my chest hair was stuck in the plaster. We tugged and we tugged. And after about 20 minutes of this, we realized it wasn't coming off. So we got a pair of long-bladed blunt scissors. And it snipped wildly down there got as much as I could, wrenched it off with a yelp and a bit of blood, and and, and I was relieved, but we were in uh, bigger trouble, because when we tried to remove the more delicate area, um, I was attached to a large slab of plaster by a place that you wouldn't want to be. We talked, we wriggled, I I, I cried a little bit, and then I did what any sensible human being would do, and I I fainted. Um, (laughs) So um, now we're in... um, an even worse situation. And the sculptor's at a complete loss. He doesn't know what to do, so, so he goes next door and he gets my father. <laughs> gets my father. So my father sees something that no father should ever have to see. <laughs> he walked into a garage and the first thing he saw was his naked son face down on the concrete. My buttocks were in the air. He could have parked a bicycle. So, like a good British man, he went and he made a cup of sweet tea. I fucking hate sweet tea. 
and, but the best thing was that he handed it to me and he left out of embarrassment. So we considered uh, taking me to uh, see some more qualified people to remove me from the plaster, but we thought we'd try something a bit more terrifying first. So he handed me the long-bladed scissors and we pulled up the side of the plaster and I snipped and I snipped and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I did all right. Um, I snipped. Um, but I'm, I'm not asking you to use your imagination too much. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail. It was painful. It was scary. Every snip was terrifying. And when we'd snipped as much as we possibly could, which, you know, wasn't all that much, um, we wrenched it off. <sighs> and with a scream that was higher than I thought I'd be able to scream, uh, you know, we, we separated me from the plaster. And as I s sat there with a blanket round me as I was shivering in his garage, we laughed at this plaster cast, this perfect image of me with two tufts of hair in it <laughs> and blood splatters all over it. And inside I had a little uh, moment of relief when I realized that one area of it would have to be entirely remodeled uh, because the hair had completely destroyed it. Um, and that meant that my embarrassment wouldn't actually be immortalized forever. But I had to go back the next week and get my head done, which involved Vaselineing the whole thing. But that's another story, and that's how I became uh, <laughs> wise enough to say no to stuff like this. It ended up being an anatomical model that went into a children's museum. And I tried to track this down about 10 years ago. I tried to find the children's museum only to find out that it had closed. So that means that somewhere near Glasgow in a landfill is a perfect image of my naked body. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.